One month ago today, a lone gunman entered Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and over the course of 10 minutes, killed 17 people with an assault rifle. 17 lives taken. 17 people with friends, family, and loved ones. 17 innocent victims senselessly murdered. Sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, husbands, and teachers. People who were loved and appreciated in their community. Imagine 17 of your closest friends, gone forever, without reason, and one month later, it's still too soon to talk about it. In 2012 at Sandy Hook Elementary School, when 20 children between the ages of five and 10 were murdered six years ago, and it's too soon to talk about it. In 1999, when two armed students killed 13 and injured 24 at Columbine High School, 19 years ago, and it's too soon to talk about it. 19 years, an entire generation, our entire generation, is it still too soon? We're here today to commemorate the, love, the lives excuse me, of those lost in Columbine and Sandy Hook and Marjorie Stoneman, along with anyone who has ever been brutally murdered without cause and without morality in what is meant to be a safe setting for children to learn and to grow. And we are here to say that now is the right time to talk about these issues, and now is the right time to say, never again. Thank you. It is not okay that there are students who come to school all over the country terrified that they won't come back tomorrow. As students, it's natural to show up at school worried about a test or worried about your grades. It makes sense that there are people concerned with how they look or what others think about them. It's not okay that there are children who are worried that they will not come back from school tomorrow. Today is a watershed moment in our history. Today we are here to show that just like millions of other students all over our city, all over our state, and all over our country, we will not be afraid any longer. Our generation is here, and we want change, and we will continue to be tenacious until we can say, never again. But we expect nothing, and we hope for the best. And we remember that this is not about red or blue or left or right. This is about being against murderers coming into our school and killing innocent people. I implore each and every one of you in front of me to help us today in writing letters to our congressmen and women with our ideas and suggestions of how we can better contain the issue of gun violence in our schools. <laughs> on top of that, on top of that, I ask you to listen to one another and discuss your ideas with each other instead of arguing over whose opinions are better. And finally, as we continue, I'd like to remind everyone that change does not happen overnight. So we cannot and will not allow the movement to die here. We will continue to believe and persevere and utilize all of our rights as American citizens, including your right to vote and your right to call your congressperson and demand change. Thank you. I would now like to ask for a minute of silence, followed by the readings of the names of the 17 victims of the Parkland shootings. Thank you. Alyssa Alhadef was 14. She was a talented soccer player and she played for the Parkland travel team. 
Scott Beagle was 35. He was a geography teacher. He was shot while ushering students into his classroom. Martin Duque was 14. He was taken from his family and his brother will forever mourn the loss of his baby brother. Nicholas Dwart was 17. He had recently been recruited by the Indianapolis swim team. This coming fall, he would have been a freshman. Aaron Feiss was 37. The assistant football coach jumped in front of students, shielding them from the gunfire. Jamie Guttenberg was 14. A day after the shooting, her father released a statement, I am broken as I write this, trying to figure out how my family will get through this. We have lost our baby girl. And my son has lost his sister. Chris Hickson was 49. He was the athletic director and wrestling coach. He thought of every single kid as one of his own, giving them rides, lunch money, and if they needed it, opening up his home to them. Luke Hoyer was 15. His grandparents learned of the shooting on the news. A day passed with no news of Luke, and they prayed that he would be found wandering around in shock. Kara Lagren was 14. She was a talented dancer and is described as a beautiful soul. She was always smiling. Gina Montalto was 14. She was a gifted artist and kept her sketchbook with her at all times. She is described as the sweetest soul ever. Joaquin Oliver was 17. What would be his last Instagram post was a message to his girlfriend. Thank you, Lord, for putting a greater blessing than I could ever imagine into my life this past year. I love you with all my heart. Elena Petty was 14. She, along with Peter Wang and Martin Duque, was a junior cadet in the ROTC at her school, a leadership program taught by retired Army personnel. She volunteered after Hurricane Irma. Meadow Pollock was 18. Her best friend growing up says she has no words to describe how this feels. Rest in peace, my beautiful angel. You are and forever will be loved. Helena Ramsey was 17. Her kind demeanor brought the best out in all who knew her. She was deeply loved and loved others even more she would have started college in the fall. Alex Schachter was 14. The band director felt he had a bright musical future. A scholarship fund is being created to help other students experience the beauty of music just as Alex did. Carmen Shentrup was 16. Majory Stoneman Douglas had 10 students qualify as semifinalists as 2018 National Merit Scholars Carmen was one of these 10. Finally, Peter Wang was 15. He was a member of the ROTC. He was killed while holding open the door for other students to escape. The Army has awarded him, as well as Elena Petty and Martin Duque, with the Medal of Heroism. His selfless acts saved the lives of dozens. Hi, thank you guys for coming. We're now gonna pass out letters for you guys to write to local politicians. Please be respectful and think about what you're writing. We're hoping to actually make a difference, not just write something to be thrown away. Thank you. Um, after we're done writing, we're having another speaker, so don't leave.
these are templates. If, if we could ask everyone's help in taking one and passing it back, you know, sharing with one another. Um, and if you have pencils or paper, share those with one another as well. Um, yeah, share pencils and paper, etc. And feel free to sit and take your time and uh, spread out. And yeah, just give this to us after. Thank you. <laughs> It's okay, we can check. No, we're not.